Okay, so here's my basic test scene. It has a simple sketch for a house, a V-ray plane for the ground, a couple of trees, and a V-ray physical camera. I'm gonna make sure my physical camera has the white balance set to neutral. And uh, the exposure settings are about right as they are in default settings for an exterior. So F8, 200 shutter speed and film speed, maybe 100. Okay, maybe let's increase to 200. That should be good. So typical exterior exposure. So the first step for lighting the scene is gonna be creating a V-Ray dome light. Go to V-Ray light, create the light and change it to dome. Okay, I'm gonna reduce the multiplier to one. And now we need to set up a texture. For texture, I'm gonna use V-Ray HDRI. Right, and now when you open the material editor, you can drag and drop this uh, map in any empty slot and create an instance. Now any changes you make in the material editor will be reflected on this uh, light texture here. So you can go ahead and browse for your HDR image. Wait for the thumbnail to appear. And change the mapping type to spherical. Most HDRI images are spherical nowadays, so that's usually the default setting. And for now, let's leave the rest as it is. Okay, so we can make a quick test render. I'm just gonna reduce my settings a bit. Just to make the render a bit quicker. And as you can see, it's much too dark at the moment. Some HDRIs are too bright, some are too dark. It uh, depends on how they were processed and saved. So this one is too dark. And to fix that, we're gonna go to our HDRI uh, map in the material editor and increase the render multiplier to maybe 100 and see how that looks. Okay, so that looks much better. And I think the sky looks a bit flat and we can increase the contrast by reducing the gamma value. The shadows are a bit too soft as well and uh, increasing the contrast of the image is going to help that uh, help with that as well. So let's say we're going to reduce the gamma to maybe 0 0.75. I found that the values from 0 0.5 to 1 work well. I wouldn't go lower than 0 0.5. Okay, that's a bit better. You can see that the shadows are a bit sharper as well. And the exposure looks uh, about right. So you can call this done and move on. Or you can add a V-Ray sunlight for more precise control over the shadows. I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first step is hiding everything. So just hide unselected and go to the top viewport. And now we're going to create, and create another V-Ray camera doesn't matter how you position it. Just create a camera and press C to enter the camera view. All right. And the next step is actually putting the V-Ray HDRI map in the environment map slot. Just drag and drop and create an instance. Okay, and we can actually preview it in the viewport by going to views, uh, viewport background and setting it to environment background and the image appears. Now when you rotate your camera, you can see how the image looks 
in different directions. So what we want to do is we want to position uh, the brightest spot of the image or the sun in the center of our viewport. That's about right, I think. Uh, if you have trouble seeing where exactly the spot is located, you can go to your VRA HDRI map and adjust the overall multiplier. For example, if your image is too dark, you can increase the multiplier and it becomes brighter. Or if it's too bright, you can reduce it and the sh shadows become stronger and the highlights become weaker and you can see the spot more precisely. So it looks like the sun is about here. Once you determine the position of the sun, go to the top viewport and create a V-Ray sunlight matching the direction of your V-Ray physical cam. Okay, and choose no to adding a V-Ray sky map into environment slot. We already have an HDRI map there. Right, so now go back to your camera and move up the sunlight like this. That seems about right. It doesn't need to be super perfect, it just needs to be close enough so the shadows come from the same direction. Okay, so the sunlight looks to be positioned right. Let's delete the camera. And let's unhide by name our V-Ray light. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to position it in the center between the VRA Sun target and VRA Sun light. So if you select both of them, you're gonna see that the manipulator tool is over here. And you can use that to see the exact center point. And that's close enough. Okay. And what we wanna achieve next is that when we rotate our V-Ray dome light, the sun rotates with it. To do that, just select both the V-Ray sun and V-Ray sun target and link them to your V-Ray dome light. Okay, that's good. And try rotating it. And you can see the sunlight rotates as well. Right, so let's unhide all and see how our render looks now. And as you can see, the shadows are much, much stronger. I'm gonna reset my um, HDRI overall multiplier to one as it was before. And retry the render. Okay, shadows are much stronger now. And this actually looks quite unrealistic at this point. And that's because our sky map has a lot of clouds and the light should be more diffused, the shadow shouldn't be so sharp and the light source should be weaker as well. And we can simulate this effect by selecting our V-Ray Sun and first reducing the intensity multiplier I'm going to try 0 0.3. That's because the sun is behind the clouds. Uh, and it should be weaker. Okay. This looks better. And now we're going to make the shadows softer by increasing the size of your sunlight. So the basic idea is this. The larger is the size of the light source, the softer are the shadows. So for this uh, sort of overcast, cloudy day, shadows would be pretty soft. So I think maybe let's increase it to 20 and see how it looks. Alright, that's much better. I think this looks about right. Okay. Maybe even 25.
And once you're happy with the shadows and the intensity of sunlight, you can set up a link between the rotation of uh, V-Ray dome light and the rotation of V-Ray HDRI map. That's pretty easy to do. Uh, you just isolate your dome light. Press Alt-Q to isolate it. And right-click and select the wire parameters. And we're, wa we're going to wire together rotation on the Z axis with uh, the texture rotation for the same light. So just click on the light again and go to your texture horizontal rotation. And this is going to create a link between Z rotation of the light and horizontal rotation of the texture. And for some reason this uh, rotation is inverted. So to get this effect to work correctly we need to set the Z rotation to a negative value like this. And let's, uh, you, you have two options here. You can control the rotation in the material editor and in the viewport or just in the viewport or just in the material editor. I prefer rotating the V-Ray light. So I'm going to select the control direction from left to right like this. And now just press the connect button. Okay. Close it. And now when you rotate your map, you're going to see that the environment rotates as well. So like that. Okay, unhide all. And you can use the environment slot for picking the nice picking a nice spot for background. Some nice cloud formation, or something like that. You have very precise control now. And once you're happy with the position, you can go ahead and disable the V-Ray V-Ray HDRI from the environment environment map slot. And we're gonna use only V-Ray Dome Light for lighting. And for final renders, you might want to increase the map resolution to the maximum available value of 2048 pixels something like that. And you can incre decrease the shadow bias to get to more precise shadows. All right. And that's about it. Now when you render, you get some nice shadows which you can control. Uh, with V-Ray Sunlight, you can make them stronger, you can make them sharper, whatever you need, you have very precise control. And you can rotate the position of the map by rotating the V-Ray Dome Light. Okay. So nothing too difficult. And I think the results look pretty good.